HRC, 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 Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader Church. Hey brothers and sisters. Praise Ahaya Ashre Ahaya and Adona Yache. Now Mother Ruaka Kwadoshi. Hope you all are enjoying this journey. It's a wonderful time to learn the true gospel of Yache Meshiach, the hope of life, the salvation to the end of the world. Uh, we're gonna learn about a perfect heart today. By the example and admonition of our Dona Yache and others that had his spirit in them. Uh, let's start at Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 48. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So we see the beginning of understanding how to be perfect is to be impartial. Right. Good unto all. all. Right? That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Right. Do not even the publicans so? Right. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. There we see we have commandment to be perfect, right. as Ahaya, our Father. There is a concept in the world today that nobody can be perfect. And according to the scriptures, this is not true, because here... First and foremost, Yache Awa Adana commanded us to be perfect. And he would not lay a burden upon us that we could not bear right. by his strength in us. So we can be perfect and we're going to look at scriptures in regards to these things and how we may attain unto this. Now, we have admonition of what a true Christian is. The true Christians operate with this perfect heart. And we can look at that in Romans chapter 12. Verse 16 to 21. Romans chapter 12, verse 16. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Right. If it be possible, as much life in you. Live peaceably with all men. All right. Notice that if it be possible, there are some people where we just literally have to keep away from. Right. Because you can't have peace with them, therefore you separate from them so that you don't bring sin upon yourself. All right. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Because Yache, even when they wanted to try to kill him, he could have called for the angels to come and destroy everybody. Right. But he didn't take it into his own hand. He waited for what Ahaya had appointed. But rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, saith Ahaya. That's interesting because a lot of people use the strong shall bear the infirmities of the weak. Mm -hmm. They use that scripture in the wrong context because the strong are those who are stronger in the fruits of the Spirit. That's right. That's so right. they bear the infirmity of the weak. That's exactly what they're talking about. It's don't take vengeance into your own hands the strong quote unquote the worldly essay you have to be the better man or the better person it's because you're operating in more of the fruits of the spirit than the other person so you have to be that example praying that a higher would turn their heart by seeing the righteous example in you right right, right. so that's good understanding of what paul was exhorting therefore if thy enemy hunger feed him if he thirst give him drink 
because they need an example of Yache. When people are struggling, even more so, they need an example of Yache. You have to be an example of the light and do good unto them, even if they're not doing good unto you. That's right. Who was it? Was it Isaac? When they came, the Philistines, the Philistines came, yeah, they, yeah, they took his well. They were You're taking right. everything from him. You're right. And he asked them, "Why do y'all come to me, seeing that they hate me?" You're right. And he still made a feast for them and everything. You're right. Because they wanted peace. So. You're right. So we have a good example of the righteousness of a true believer, a true perfect heart in Isaac, right. and how he operated, knowing the malice they had toward him, yet he sought peace. You got the strong set bed and family of the week. I want to make sure that it's precepted to it. Well, All right. Thank you. Oh, no oh, there it is. It's Romans 15 and 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. You have that precept so you can understand what we were talking about earlier in that. Notice he said, not to please ourselves. Right. So we're looking, you're doing all things so you don't set a stumble about before your brother or sister. All right. We want to continue in Romans. Yes. Please. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 20 in the middle. If he thirsts to give him drink, for in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. And that part is wonderful because right. unless like you would melt a marshmallow, the coals of fire softens the person up right. so they can actually change. All right. All right. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And that's we see where the true strength is right. to be perfect hearted and overcome evil works with love, because love overcometh all. This is the mark of a true Christian, a true perfect heart. We are exhorted to strive towards that love in Yahche, right. by Yahche, that we may attain unto the hope and the high calling that's in Him, and. Now, let's also look at the book of Philippians. Um, Philippians 3, chapter, yeah. 3, verse 8. 8 to 15, please. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Meshiach, Yahweh, my Adonai, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and I do count them but dung, that I may win Meshiach. Okay, everything we foreknew. It means nothing for this whole thing, I'd say. Right. Right. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but of that which is through the faith of Messiah. Now, Paul, he was literally talking about animal sacrifice versus the eternal spiritual sacrifice of Yache. Right. right? And that's what he was talking about there. Okay. The righteousness which is of Elohim by faith, right. that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. And so, the, go ahead. Oh, no, sorry. So okay. that true sacrifice, believing in the true sacrifice, gives us the strength to know him. It's only through Yahshua that we can truly know him because only through Yahshua can we actually keep his commandments right. with a pure heart, with a perfect heart, because it will be Yahshua in our hearts operating in us and causing us to walk in sincerity. And know the power of his resurrection. Because that spirit of life in Mishiach Ayache is what will save us from death. And that, the power of his resurrection, we, will, we are baptized in the name of Ahaya, Yache, and Ruach Akwadoshi unto the death. To partake in the death of Yache. Right? We're crucified to our former selves. And through that baptism, we come out a new creature. We already are partaking in the resurrection in this world by becoming a new creature now. And we operate as a new creature now in hopes that if we physically die in this world, we will partake in the actual resurrection to come at the end. All right? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Notice. <laughs> 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 I'll be flowing, man. Get going. Go ahead. Know the partake in his sufferings. We have to be afflicted. And the great affliction is within ourselves. To die to our former selves. That our heart may be perfected. That's the purging. That's the baptism of fire. Purging out our old selves. Afflicting, being put away from who we were. And Messiah can be dwelling us. Right. And what what did Paul go finish saying there? Being made 
conformable unto his death. Being changed. <laughs> As he died, we die. That's right. And we become alive with him in the heavens by living a life toward Allah Hayyam. That's why our minds are in the heavens with Mishiach Ayache, no longer on the earth, paying attention to earthly deeds, but more so, how can we work the deeds of heaven? Because the angels are full of meekness, because they are the sons of Allah Hayyam. Therefore, we practice to be full of meekness, long-suffering, temperance, patience, love, joy, goodness, all the holy virgins and holy spirits. We're just walking in this world, essentially, preparing to be a part of the upper world. Right. right? If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And that's what we were just talking about. Right. He became conformable unto his death. He put off all the body of sin, walking in his life in righteousness, in hopes that by any means, right. whatever has to be done, that he may partake in a resurrection to come into him. Not as though I had already attained. Either were already perfect. Notice, he was striving in this world, not as though he's perfect already just because he believes in Yahche. Right. But we strive knowing that we have to make it to the end. We have to make it to the goal. The goal of the law of righteousness was Yahche, according to Romans 10 and 4. He is the end of righteousness for them that believe. Because right. Yacha was who we was trying to attain to. We want to be exactly like him. Right. This was what Paul was exhorting all the churches to do. Become Yache. It's him in you. The hope of glory. Attain unto him. Right. right? That's the goal. That's the end goal. Right. But I follow after. If I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of. His words are so amazing. Right. Can you read that part again? I follow after. I follow after. If that I may apprehend. So I'm chasing after this thing because I want to grab it. Right. I want to get a hold of it. And he's trying to get a hold of Yache, right? right? And then continue. That for which also I am apprehended. And Yache has a hold of him. <laughs> so he's trying to attain who has a hold of him. He's right. trying to get connected. Right. Yache is pulling you to righteousness. Right. You're trying to get to righteousness. Right. Because <laughs> that's, that's how you come into unity, to right. be joined together. The unity of the spirit. It's interesting, though, because if Yache has a hold of you and you're striving for perfection, but yet you're falling, whatever the case is, he's literally pulling you while you're trying to grab him. Like It's, right. it's a tug of He picks you up. Right. He picks you up. He keeps you. It's amazing. So when he says adjustment falling seven times, you understand who's picking him back up. That's right. Mm. Let's see. I'm at 13. All right. Brother, and I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. So you see how... He said it again, I count myself not to have apprehended. So he's letting them know, I'm no better than you. Right. We're fighting the same fight. But he's also showing, we know Paul sinned before. Everybody knows if you right. read about the scriptures, you know Paul sinned. But right. what did Paul do? He forgot those things that were before. Right. He cast them off by faith. He believed, I have an atonement. That's I right. have Yache. I, I made a mistake. Yes, I'm done with that. I'm going forward. And you can see how he's exhorting. I'm striving toward this because I know what I'm fighting for. I know what I want to attain unto. He even uses it as his testimony. Yes. Like, yo, you've seen what I was doing before. Look at me now. Right. Like, you, can, you can do it too. Right. Let me be the example for you. Right. That's what he's doing. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Elohim in Meshiach Yache. And that's what we're exhorted to do to this day. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. You see how a perfect person would be? That's a person in perfection. Right. They're striving toward it. No excuses, no self-justifying to stay where one is, but right. constantly striving, striving to attain. Now you see how a perfect mindset would work. Right. And if in anything... You be otherwise minded, Elohim shall reveal even this unto you. So if you don't think this is how you attain, 
Allah Hayyam will show you. <laughs> this is the way. Strive. Go forward. Keep going forward toward Yahweh. Keep learning the commandments. Keep practicing the fruits of the Spirit. Right. If you falter, repent and focus. Focus with all your heart not to do it again. That's right. Because that's fruits worthy of repentance. And now, we're going to look at a great example of a perfect heart in the testimonies. Let's go to Acts chapter 13, verse 32. And look at Dewey. Alright? You want um, Acts 13 and 22? Yes, please. If I said something different, I apologize. Okay. Uh, Acts 13 and 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto him the way they to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found the way they the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. So a man after his own heart, because the way they was sincere. Right. He was sincere. We're going to read about his sincerity, because we've heard in the book of Romans about how a perfect heart doesn't render evil for evil, right. doesn't take vengeance into their own hands, right. and condescend to men of low estate, so they humble themselves. That's right. Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 38. 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 38. And it shall be, if thou wilt hearken unto all that I will command thee, and wilt walk in my ways, and do that is right in my sight. So this was Ahiah talking to Solomon. To keep my statutes. And my commandments, as the way they my servant did, that I will be with thee and build thee a sure house, as I built for the way they, and will give it Allah unto thee. So there we see that keeping the law, statutes, and commandments—that's a part of being perfect-hearted, right? Because that's an example of our sincerity unto Allah. All right, In verse four of that same chapter. Verse four, please. First Kings chapter eleven, verse four. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wife turned away his heart after other Elohims, and his heart was not perfect with the high Elohim, as was the heart of the way that his father. So we have according to the scriptures, the way that his heart was perfect. And now we're going to look at some of those examples in our first Samuel chapter twenty four, verse uh, four and five, four to six. Okay. First Samuel chapter twenty four, verse four. And the men of the way they said unto him, Behold the day of which Ahia said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemies into thy hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. So here we see Ahia was trying the way they, because Saul sought to kill the way they, and the way they didn't do anything wrong. It's just that the way they was doing everything righteously, right. and the people loved him, and Saul was jealous, so he sought to kill the way they. Right. Now, the way they has the opportunity to avenge himself. Ahia literally set him before him to see what he would choose to test his heart. And we remember what was shown, what a person of a perfect heart would do. And let's see what the way they chose. Then the way they arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privily. And it came to pass afterward that the way that his heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. Notice the man hated him, yet he had such bowels of mercy he felt bad just cutting his skirt. And continued, and he said unto his men, I have forbid that I should do this thing unto my master. I have anointed to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of Ahia. Notice the respect he still had for him, even though he knew he didn't like him. And was trying to kill him. He still reverenced him as the king for Ahia's sake. And there you have understand to see how perfect heart one would look at things towards Ahaya first. You keep your eyes on Allah in all things, in all your actions, and that will keep you in a perfect place so that you don't transgress and fall away. So you can see the way they kept his mind thinking this wouldn't be right in Ahaya's eyes. Even though everything was set before him for him to do something, but he chose the path of not rendering evil for evil. Alright? Let's jump to verse uh Jump to verse 10, please. 10 to 18. All right. First Samuel chapter 24, verse 10. Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how Ahia had delivered thee today into my hand in the cave. And now look at how the way they is going to speak to Saul because he had gotten the cloth and he only got it just to show Saul that, hey, 
I could have killed you, but I'm just showing you this to see that I don't have a problem with you. Okay? And some bade me kill thee, but my eye spared thee. And I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Adonai, for he is a highest anointed. Moreover, my father, see, yea, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand. It was speaking to a much grace season with salt. Like, look, I, I'm not trying to have an issue with you. You see, he was seeking peace. And you see how he was operating with a perfect heart. For in that I cut off thy skirt of thy robe, and killed thee not. Know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand. And I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take it. Notice, he's the strong Bearing right. the infirmity of the weak, right. because David is showing him, like, I'm not against you. I'm not trying to hurt you. Staying in the fruits of the Spirit in hopes that Saul will come out of it. Right. I higher just between me and thee, and I higher avenge me of thee, but my hand shall not be upon thee. Notice, not taking vengeance into his own hands. There you see the way they're doing these things in the Old Testament. Right. As we talked about before, that the righteous of old had the fruits of the Spirit. I saith the proverb of the ancients, Wickedness proceedeth from the wicked, but my hand shall not be upon thee. Notice, the wicked, they're going to render evil for evil. All right? And you can even uh, attest that, uh, that David was reading the book of Yasha. <laughs> right. See, you know the book of Yasha is true because the way they knew the same saying as Brother Zach was saying. Right. Verse 14. After whom is the king of Israel come out? After whom doest thou pursue? After a dead dog? After a flea? Look how look how humble the way it is referring to himself. Like I'm nothing. I'm I'm a dead dog or a flea. Why are you even worried about me? You're the king of Israel. Right. You see how he was a man of low estate. He didn't speak to him in any way to try to provoke him to anger. Right. Although All, he was a man of great stature because he was leading the army. Right. right. All his words were seeking to melt him. Right. He was trying to get Saul to calm down, to look at what's really going on. I don't have a problem with you. So you can see how he was working the fruits of the Spirit with a perfect heart. I therefore be judge, and judge between me and thee, and see and plead my cause, and deliver me out of thy hand. He committed all things into Ahiah's hand, right? And it came to pass when the way they had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul. And Saul said, Is this thy voice, my son, the way they? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to the way they, Thou art more righteous than I. For thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. And thou hast showed this day how that thou hast dealt well with me. For as much as when Ahiah had delivered me into thy hand, thou killedest me not. For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? Wherefore, Ahiah reward thee good for that thou hast done unto me this day. Notice. So you see how it melted him. Right. Uh, let's jump to First Samuel chapter 26, okay. verse 8 to 11. Because Saul continued trying to kill him again, and Ahiah gave him into Dewey's hand again. And we're going to see that Dewey still would not lift his hand up against the king. And mind you, this is showing the patience and long suffering of Dewey too, because he know full well that he went through all that with him in the beginning, and here we are again, he's still trying to kill him. Yet Dewey will not turn from serving Ahiah with a pure heart. Right? First Samuel 26 and 8. Then said Abisha to the way they, Elohim hath delivered thy enemy into thy hand this day. Now therefore let me smite him, I pray thee, with the spear even to the earth at once, and I will not smite him the second time. That's an interesting test. The way they being tested again to see if he will even let somebody else do it. Right. Let's partake with somebody else's sin. And what does he decide to do? And the way they said to Abisha, destroy him not. For who can stretch forth his hand against the highest anointed and be guiltless? No, it is. Abishai tried to make it seem all good, like it's going to take one blow. I right. won't even need to hit him twice. Let me go get him. The way they kept his mind on Ahaya, right. it shows that he wasn't hearkening to Abishai. Right. He kept his mind 
listening for what's righteous in Ahaya's sight, as opposed to what would seem just in the sight of men. The way they said, furthermore, as Ahaya liveth, Ahaya shall smite him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. So as Ahaya liveth, let Ahaya handle that. Right. I'm not going to partake in that. Ahaya forbid that I should stretch forth my hand against Ahaya's anointed. But I pray thee, take thou now the spear that is at his bolster and the cruise of water and let us go. So we're going to jump to verse 23 and 24. The way they j grab the cruise and the spear. Now this is again to give a testimony. This is right. a show saw. Hey, could have done it again, but right. didn't do it. Not rendering evil for evil, right? Verse 23. And a higher render to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness. For I higher delivered thee into my hand today, but I would not stretch forth my hand against a higher's anointed. And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in mine eyes, so let my life be set by in the eyes of a higher, and let him deliver me out of all tribulation. He committed all things into a higher's hand, right? Then Saul said to the waiter, Blessed be thou, my son, the waiter. Thou shalt both do great things, and also shalt still prevail. For the way they went on his way, and Saul returned to his place. So we've seen, sadly, how Saul, he did not repent. He kept trying to do it. And praise Ahaya that at least we get to see an example of righteousness in the way they, by not rendering evil for evil, not taking vengeance in his own hands, you know, staying in the fruits of the Spirit. Keeping a perfect heart, keeping Ahaya on his mind first, and doing all things in righteousness. All right, now let's look at another event. First Samuel chapter one. I mean, Second Samuel chapter one. In that chapter, uh, the way they Saul had died, they killed Saul and Jonathan, and the way they actually lamented for him. He cried for Saul and Jonathan. Jonathan was like his brother, his best friend. And he cried for Saul just the same. And we'll actually jump to Proverbs 24, 17 and 18. Brothers and sisters, you can read uh, first, second Samuel chapter 1 when you have the opportunity. But that showed how the way they, though Saul hated the way they, yet the way they from his heart truly had mercy for Saul. To cry for him when he passed. He literally did not hate him in his heart. It wasn't, quote-unquote, like he was faking it. He really had mercy for him in his heart and lamented for him. All right? Proverbs chapter 24, verse 17. Rejoice not when thy enemy falleth, and let not thy heart be glad when he stumbleth. And there we see the wisdom of Allah because the, the way they did not rejoice at his enemy's fall. Least the high I see it, and it displeased him, and he turned away his wrath from him. All right, because Ahaya is righteous. Ahaya doesn't even have pleasure in the death of one that dieth. Right. Therefore, how, how can we laugh or, you know, find it amusing when someone else is falling away from the hope of Allah? Now, we have even more examples in the way they, because the way they had failed. We talked about adjustment, fall, and get it back up. Right. And through the way they and Reuben, we can get examples of how, yes, one might fall, but a perfect heart will not do what they did again. Because in perfect, Paul talked about being perfect is to strive forward. Right. We're going to see the way they, he made a mistake. He repented quickly because that shows his sincerity. Right. And he didn't do it again. In Second uh, Samuel 12 and 13, the way they had fallen with the woman Bathsheba. And the way they said unto Nathan, I have sinned against Ahiah. And Nathan said unto the way they, Ahiah also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. Notice, he put away his sin because he truly repented. He didn't seek to justify himself. Right. It got brought to him and he was willing to hear it. So the spirit of offense didn't enter him trying to reason why he wasn't wrong or anything like that. Right. He's like, I sinned. He was, it was quick, like, whoa, uh, this isn't right. And uh, I had mercy, right? And he didn't turn back to it. He didn't go commit adultery again. Right. Now, 
uh, Proverbs 28 and 13 talks about that, how um, confessing our sins will, will get us mercy. Proverbs 28 and 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Notice confess and forsake. Right. It's not just confess. You can't just say you are wrong, but not really repent in your heart like Saul did and continuing what you're doing. That's right. You actually have to confess it and in your heart truly know that it was wrong and turn away from it right. and don't do it again. As we know, the way they did not do it again. We also have admonition of doing things in righteousness in Reuben because Reuben had uncovered his father's couch. He had laid with his father's wife. He had got overtaken by an evil spirit. And he made a mistake, but he was wrong. And we get a good example to see how people operate in the fruits of the Spirit after what transpired. Because Reuben did not do that again. He actually strove with all his heart and soul not to sin ever again because of that thing he had did wrong. It's a good exhortation for us to know that we have to get up and work righteousness with all our heart and soul. And let's look at uh, Book of Reuben, uh, the Testament of Twelve Patriarchs. Can you read chapter one, verse six, please. Testament of Reuben, chapter six to eight. Okay. Sorry. Testament of Reuben, chapter one, verse six. Hear, my brethren, and do ye, my children, give ear to Reuben your father, and the commands which I give unto you. And behold, I call to witness against you this day the Elohim of heaven, that you walk not after the sins of youth and fornication, wherein I was poured out and defiled the bed of my father, Jacob. So we see he's confessing his faults, and he's admonishing us not to do the same. And I tell you that he smote me with a sore plague in my loins for seven months. And had not my father, Jacob, prayed for me to Ahia, Ahia would have destroyed me. Now, jump to chapter 4, verse 2 to 4. For until my father's death, I had not boldness to look in his face, or to speak to any of my brethren, because of the reproach. Even until now, my conscience causes me anguish on account of my impiety. So you see the sincere repentance of Reuben. From his heart, he felt bad for what he did. And yet my father comforted me much and prayed for me unto Ahia that the anger of Ahia might pass from me, even as Ahia showed. And there you see the bowels of mercy of Jacob, the strong bearing the infirmity of the weak. Though his son sinned, he encouraged him to move forward. He didn't condemn him and just leave him like he wanted him to fall away. Being strong in the faith, he continued to encourage him to get back up. You know, move forward, strive. This is interesting for you go on. This is actually a confirmation of why Yacha had to come. This guilty conscience, right? He couldn't purge the conscience. Right, right. Hebrews 9 and 14. Right. Now we're going to look at how Reuben, Reuben did make a mistake, but let's see Reuben's heart. What did Reuben do after he made the mistake? Did he keep going backwards and fall back into the same thing? Or did he strive with everything he had in him to move forward? Right. Uh, Reuben chapter 1 verse 9 to 10. For I was 16 years old when I wrought the evil before Ahia. And for seven months I was sick unto death. And after this I repented and set purpose of my soul for seven years before Ahia. And wine and strong drink I drank not. And flesh entered not into my mouth, and I ate no pleasant food. But I mourned over my sin, for it was great, such as had not been done in Israel. So we saw for seven years he ate no pleasant food in his mourning. And then chapter 4, verse 5. I got it. All right. Got it. Whatever. And henceforth until now, I have been on my guard and sinned not. So we see he was on guard. We talked about how here and to here you have to guard. He right. guarded the commandments entirely. If he mourned and he guarded them, he was not willing to fall again. Because right. he understood the gravity of his mistake. Right. He was sincere in his repentance. Now let's see 
in the book of Sirach, and deal with that there. Okay. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Uh, chapter Sirach, chapter thirty-four, verse nineteen. We're going to read verse nineteen, verse twenty-five and twenty-six, and then we're going to read Sirach chapter five, about verse two to seven. So we're going to see that in in sin, sin is a heart. We we cannot fall back to sin. We have to repent from our hearts truly and not turn back to these things, right. because. According to the scriptures, we're going to see the admonitions on sinning and then saying sorry and then sinning again. How we look in the sight of Allah when we do such things. So Acts chapter 34 verse 19. The Most High is not pleased with the offering of the wicked. Neither is he pacified for sin by the multitude of sacrifices. Now we talked before about how now our sacrifices are our prayers and our thanksgiving. That's right. right. Our spiritual sacrifices. Nonetheless, he's still not pleased with them if we're in wickedness. Right. Because if we're just praying and praising but committing sin, we're only confessing him with our mouth, but in our heart we're not serving him. Right. And in our deeds we're blaspheming his name. Hence he wouldn't be pleased with it. That's why they confess they, they love him, but their heart is far from him. Right. 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 Isaiah testified against us about that. Right. And Yache re- asserted it in um, Mark chapter 7. Right. What verse you want to skip down to? Uh, verse 25 All right. and 26. So 34 and 25. Yes, please. He that washeth himself after the touching of a dead body, if he touch it again, what availeth his washing? So is it with a man that fasteth for his sins, and goeth again, and doeth the same. All right. Who will hear his prayer? Or what doeth his humble and profit him? And we see, if we repent, we have to repent and not turn back to these things that we had fallen in. Right. And they continue striving forward. Because who would hear our prayers if we're continually doing the same thing? Right. It's a hindrance to us to operate in that manner. Um, now I'll jump to Sirach 5, verse 2 to 7. Okay. Sirach chapter 5, verse 2. Follow not thy own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. And say not, who shall control me for my works? Don't think that nothing's going to happen if you continue doing what you're doing. Right. We have to turn. We have to turn because we are admonished here. Right. For Ahia will surely revenge thy pride. Say not, I have sinned, and what harm hath happened unto me? So we know his pride to think that, hey, yeah, I messed up, but ain't nothing happened. Right. You have to look at it like, I want to attain unto this with all my heart and all my soul. Say not, I have sinned, and what harm hath happened unto me? For Ahia is long-suffering, he will in no wise let thee go. So Ahia, is, he sees everything you're doing, right. and he's long-suffering, hoping that you would change. Right. Yet and still, if you don't change, you won't get away from it. Right. Concerning propitiation. Be not without fear to add sin unto sin. Yeah, I change the propitiation. Because he died for our sins, don't think that it's okay to sin. That's why he said, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. So make sure you seek your salvation in fear and trembling. That's right. That's what Paul actually said in uh, the book of Philippians. Right. Because knowing the judgment of Allah, we are to be going toward Yahshua everything in us by Yache to attain unto this hope, knowing that he judges righteously. That's right. Because them that live without law shall perish without law. That's right. And those that live by the law shall be judged in the law. Paul talked about that in Romans chapter 2, about verse 13 or 14. Can we continue? Verse 6. And say not his mercy is great, he will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. Now, this is a very serious verse because right. this is the mind of the world. That his mercy is great. He's long-suffering. He loves everybody. He's so kind that he'll be pacified for the multitude of my sins. Like he understands he's not going to be upset with me. When I is merciful for the sake of your repentance and hope that you are changed, that's the true love. He wants to see us do well. He wants us to partake in his holiness. 
we have to acknowledge this and turn unto him while we have opportunity. Because if we don't, for mercy and wrath come from him, and his indignation resteth upon sinners. So we see, if we are in the lot of sinners, we will receive the indignation. But if we are in the lot of those that with a sincere heart are trying to get it right, there is mercy as we are getting it right. All right? Make no tarry to turn to a higher, and put not off from day to day. And there we see why we have to be quick. Right. Be quick to do it. Don't wait. We have the opportunity. We are alive today. Let's go forward. Right. For suddenly shall the wrath of a higher come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. And that's the scary part. That so you might think you are getting away with whatever you may be doing, but if we don't change, that time is going to come when it's too late. Right. And it's things change and something happens. That's why you see someone, they seemed like they were doing well one day and the next thing you know they get in a car wreck right. or something of that nature, they're gone. Right. Because their time ran out. So we have an exhortation to take this opportunity seriously and be perfect in heart and strive towards the hope in Yahche. Take the affliction of dying to ourselves that we may partake in his hope. And let's look at um, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 18 to 23. We'll close there. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 18. Servants be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle but also to the forward. And that shows the perfect heart. You're doing right no matter what someone's doing to you. Because we don't render evil for evil. But we overcome evil with good. Right? For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience toward Allah endure grief, suffering wrongfully. That's exactly what the way they did. Right. Right. Jacob did the same thing with Laban. Right. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with Allah. That's truly praiseworthy. Because right. then we become like Yahche. Because he did nothing wrong. That's right. Yet he suffered our afflictions for us. For even hereunto were ye called. <laughs> because Meshiach also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. That's amazing. So Yaja came doing nothing wrong and suffered for us so that we may live. And now that we believe in Yaja, we have to go and do no wrong and suffer for him <laughs> that we may live. <laughs> Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. Then we see fruits of the Spirit and render evil for evil. When he suffered, he threatened not. All right, perfect man but committed himself to him that judges righteously. And there we see how we are to operate this day. Right. Do all things in perfection of heart. Be good unto all in righteousness. Partake in no iniquity. That Mishiach Yacha may abound in our hearts and bring us unto the perfection that he is by him in us. And the Ruach HaKwadoshi leading us. And the in closing, I want to exhort you to understand being perfect and being at peace with all men does not mean partaking in other sins. Right. You be at peace, but when you see iniquity, you have to separate yourself that you may make sure you are doing all things in the sight of Allah. Right. Uh, another exhortion uh, don't say that Allah knows the times we're in that no man can be perfect because of the times that we're living in. And it's not the times of old or the Old Testament or during the times of Paul or, or the apostles. Right? Al-Hayim is the creator of the world. He knows the times. He knows what's going on in the world. So he still desires us to be perfect. And we still have to obtain to it. We still have to obtain to the perfect stature of Messiah. There's no excuse. So let's be admonished, brothers and sisters, that we, we can do it.
we can obtain to, to being as Yahweh, because we were made for it. Elohim said he made the sun rise and the rain to come on the wicked as well as the righteous. They had the same opportunity. Was that in the uh, Apocalypse of Paul when he said uh, that they had the same opportunity? Yeah, did it go one day by that you didn't see a righteous man? Right. So you're going to have no excuse even in the day of judgment. All right. And that's a wonderful exhortation in these times, especially where things are hastening toward right. high time to put on faith right. and seek perfection of heart. Operate in humility, simplicity. Seeking your chain. Praise the Hail. Jalo. HRC, 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 Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, church.